I would like to say good afternoon, everybody. Welcome everybody here to the House of Jacob. Good afternoon, Danny. And to the people that join us each week by our conference call and by our live stream, I would like to say to them, uh, welcome as well. And as always, it's good to have you fellowshipping with us on this the Lord's Sabbath day. Now, uh, today, as always, we deal with uh, deal with the scripture. We deal with a lesson. And I titled today's lesson, The Prince of Peace Coming to Establish His Kingdom by War. Mm. Because the Lord is going to establish a kingdom on this earth. And when he establishes this kingdom, it will be a kingdom of peace. The book even says, of this kingdom and of peace there will be no end. But in order for the Lord to do that, he is going to have to overthrow the nations. In fact, the book even says that the Lord is going to invade this earth. Mm -hmm. That means he's going to take it over by force because the nations are not going to hand this thing over to the Lord. The book even says the nations was angry when they saw that the Lord's wrath had come. So they're not going to be happy. But nevertheless, this kingdom must be established because it has been spoken of from the very beginning. And the Lord is going to establish it. And there is nothing that nobody can do to stop it. So I'm just saying to you now, you may as well get ready for this kingdom because it is coming. It is going to come, so you may as well prepare for it. Nobody can stop it. I titled it The Prince of Peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace and there will be no peace until he comes. I don't care what the nations say or what they do, there will not be peace until the uh, Lord comes. I'm looking at North Korea and South Korea and they talking peace. Mm -hmm. Shaking hands across the board and all of that. Right. I don't know what's going to ultimately become of it, but one thing I do know, they're not going to bring peace. Mm -hmm. Whatever they say, or however many peace treaties they sign, or how many handshakes they have, there will be no peace. The nations have been talking peace forever and making war forever. There has not been a time in history when the nations were not at war. You know, we talk about World War I and World War II. There's always been war. And there will always be war until the Lord come. You know, they said that World War I as they call it. There's been other world wars, but you know, they, this in a more modern era. He said that World War I was a war to end all wars. Well, it didn't happen because you turned right around and had World War II. And that didn't end all wars. So it, it's not going to happen, people, until the Lord come. And you do want the Lord to come. Even some think they don't because they know when the Lord comes that everybody's going to have to toe the line. And don't nobody want to hear that. Everybody wants things to continue on as they are. The status quo is just fine with most of the world. 
But if the Lord does not come and put an end to this reign of these madmen, because that's who you have ruling the earth, madmen. He said that there would be no flesh left alive. That means you, me, and everybody else. So he's going to come because he's not going to allow man to destroy his creation. Lord created man, and he had an ultimate goal for man, an ultimate purpose for man. And he will not allow man to mess that up. So he's going to come, and he's going to put an end to the madness. And then he's going to uh, set up this uh, kingdom of peace. But in order to do that, he must overthrow the reign of man. We're going to start out here, you all, in Isaiah chapter 9. And we'll begin reading at verse 6. Isaiah 9, we'll pick it up at uh, uh, verse 6. Okay, Ray, go ahead and read, brother. For unto us a child is born. Uh -huh. Unto us a son is given. Now this child and this son that would be born and that would be given is talking about none other than Jesus Christ. And uh, we are going to show you that. And look at what it says uh, about this son that would be born and this child that would be given. Go ahead and read. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Uh -huh. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Go ahead. Counselor. Now he said the government will be up on this son's shoulder. Right. And this government that it is talking about here is none other than the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus came preaching this gospel, and the gospel that he came preaching was the gospel of the kingdom of God, and he told you about it in many different ways, told you about it in parables and plain language, and in many ways he talked about this kingdom, this government uh, that would be up on his shoulder. Go ahead and read. Counselor, uh -huh. the mighty God. Now it says his name would be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God. What else? The everlasting Father. Even the everlasting Father because he's been around throughout eternity. He just came in the flesh some 2,000 years ago when he came through uh, Mary. But what else will he be called? Go ahead and read. The Prince of Peace. And he will be called the Prince of Peace as well. Go ahead. Continue reading, brother. Of the increase of its government uh -huh. in peace, there shall be no end. Now, of the increase of this government, once he establishes it, and of this government and of peace, there will be no end. Right. Go ahead and read on. Upon the throne of David uh -huh. and upon this kingdom. Go ahead. To order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth. Even forever, uh -huh. the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now it says here he's going to up, he's going to order this, he's going to establish it with judgment and justice, even forever. Because once this kingdom is established, it's going to stand forever. That's right. Unlike any other kingdom that have come along, and there's been some great ones. They all came to an end. We 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 are living in the days of the last one before he establishes this kingdom that it is telling us about right here. Because we are living in the days of the Roman Empire that uh, the book tells us about in the second chapter of Daniel. He talked about the, the four greatest ones that would come along. And the last one would be the Roman Empire. And then after that, the Lord would come and he would establish this kingdom with judgment and with justice. And it says even forever because all the others, they came and left with the exception of the Roman Empire, and we are living in the days of it now. Let's go to Luke chapter 1 so we'll be clear as to who this is uh, that we are reading about here, this, this government that would be up on his shoulders and that would uh, even stand forever, and he would be called the Prince of Peace, even the everlasting Father and even the mighty God. Luke 1 and began reading at verse 31 and 30. Okay, brother, go ahead and read it. And the angel said unto her, mm -hmm. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Go ahead. And behold, there shall conceive in thy womb, and, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, uh -huh. and bring forth a son, go ahead. and shall call his name Jesus. Uh -huh. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. Go ahead. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Well, this is the one that we were reading about here. It says the Lord 
will give unto him the throne of his father David. Well, he's not on that throne now. That's right. He's sitting on the throne of the father now. Mm -hmm. But when he returns, he's going to sit on the throne of David. That's where he's going to sit, people. He's not taking you up there to be with the father on the father's throne. He said he's going to sit up on the throne of his father David. Go ahead and read. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob Go forever. Go ahead. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And of his kingdom there will be no end. So now we understand who this prince of peace is. Right. And we understand that he is going to establish this kingdom that will stand even forever. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2. And we began reading at uh, verse 1. Now when he came the first time, mm -hmm. he did exactly what he came to do. He did not come to establish any kingdom at that time. But the scripture tells us, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, that he will establish this everlasting kingdom. And of this kingdom there will be no end. That is what the scripture is telling us. But when he came the first time, he did not do that. He came to die uh, for the sins of man. Let's go uh, uh, look at this in Matthew chapter 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 1, 2 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea uh -huh. in the days of Herod the king, Go ahead. behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, uh -huh. saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Go ahead. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Well, the wise men understood that there had been one born and he would be the king of the Jews. Almost nobody says that anymore. Right. That's taboo. You can't say the king of the Jews. Don't say that. Mm -hmm. Well, that is what the book said. And then they asked, where is he that was born king of the Jews? Go ahead and read. When Herod the king had heard these things, uh -huh. he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. Why was he troubled? Because he was the king of the Jews. And he wants to know who is this right. that have been born right. to be king of the Jews. I'm the king of the Jews. So he was much troubled by this. Go ahead and read. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, uh -huh. he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Go ahead and read. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, uh -huh. for thus is written by the prophet. And they told him, he asked the right people, and they gave him the right answer. In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. That's where he would be born at. That's right. Go ahead, continue to read. And thou, Bethlehem, uh -huh. in the land of Judah, Go ahead. art not the least among the princes of Judah. Uh -huh. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Now, uh, you know, he's quoting here. He's quoting from Micah, right. uh, book of Micah, uh, uh, in the Old Testament, which we're going to read uh, a little of it in, in a little bit. But now, he said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? You know, he was born to be king, but he, uh, at the time that he was born, he would not become king, but he would be at the appointed time. Go ahead, continue to read. Seven. Read it. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Go ahead. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, uh -huh. that I may come and worship him also. Well, Herod didn't want to come and worship him. What Herod wanted to do was kill him. Because, you know, if you read a little history about, about this particular Herod, they, they, these, these Herods that you read about, they're all Edomites. Right, that's right. And this particular one, he was called Herod the Great. Mm -hmm. and, and history tells you that he was paranoid. He, he was always afraid that he would lose his throne. So he even had his family killed, his wives, his children, all of them killed because he was worried that somebody was going to come and take away his throne. So he had them all killed. Right. Go ahead and read. So now, you know, he said, uh, he's telling uh, the wise men that I might come and worship him. But he wouldn't, he, he didn't want to know so he could come and worship him. He wanted to know so he could kill him. Right. Go ahead and read. When they had heard the king, uh -huh. they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Go ahead. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Uh -huh. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. Go ahead. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and mirth. Uh -huh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, 
they departed into their own country another way. So now, you know, the Lord uh, uh, showed them in a dream, don't go back to your ride nothing. Right. So they departed into another country their own way. Right. Because the Lord made sure that they understand that you are not to go and tell Herod nothing. Mm -hmm. Because he's seeking a young child to kill him, not to worship him, as he had told the wise men. Go ahead, continue to read. And when they were departed, behold, uh -huh. the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Go ahead. Saying, Arise, uh -huh. and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. Go ahead. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. That's why he was upset. Right. You know, he didn't heard one that would be born king of the Jews when he's the king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. I got to get rid of him because that was his nature anyway. Anybody he thought that might eventually take over that throne, he would get rid of them. Didn't matter to him who they were. So now, when it was said that there was one that was born, the king of the Jews, he was troubled, and all of the rest of ruling with him. But now what he wanted to do was kill this, uh, uh, this uh, king of the Jews, who is, who is Jesus. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, John chapter 18. And we began reading at... Uh, at uh, 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 verse uh, uh, 28, John 18, we'll pick it up at uh, verse 28. Now remember this, this son that would be born, he would be called the everlasting father, the mighty God, even the prince of peace. And then at some point he would establish a kingdom that would stand even forever. Let's go to John chapter uh, 18, we began reading at uh, verse 28, you know, this is when Jesus uh, 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 was about to be crucified. And, 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 and Pilate sent and asked him, uh, was he the king of the Jews? John 18, and began reading at verse 28. Go ahead and read, brother. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. Uh -huh. And it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall. Go lest, ahead. Lest they should be defiled, uh -huh. but that they might eat the Passover. Go ahead. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? Uh -huh. They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, he would not have delivered him. He, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. You know, they're saying to him, you know, these were the, the, the priests and what have you of, of Israel at that time. And they... Pilate said, what accusation you got against this man right. that you done brought him unto me? And they said, if he was not a criminal, that's what a male factor is, right. then we would not have brought him unto you, Pilate. Go ahead and read. Then said Pilate unto them, uh -huh. take ye him and judge him according to your law. You know, they, they, they had a little autonomy to make judgment, even though they were under uh, of the Romans, they still had a little bit of autonomy to make certain decisions uh, for themselves as far as judgment and all of that went. Right, right. Go ahead and read. The Jews therefore said unto him, uh -huh. It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Go ahead. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Go ahead and read. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, uh -huh. Art thou the king of the Jews? And he asked Pilate, say, Are you the king of the Jews? Uh, notice what Jesus is going to reply to. You know, he's going to lead him on for a hot minute there. Right. But then he's going to just straight out tell him, Yeah, I was born to be king of the right. Jews. Go ahead and read. Jesus answered him, uh -huh. sayest, thou this, sayest thou this thing of uh -huh. thyself? Go ahead. Or did others tell it thee of me? Uh, he asked Paul, uh, you saying this on your own or did somebody have to tell you? Right. Go ahead and read. Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Uh -huh. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. Go ahead. What hast thou done? Uh -huh. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. Uh -huh. If my kingdom were of this world, then will my servants fight. He said, my kingdom is not. I, I didn't come to set up no kingdom at this time. That's right. right. My kingdom is not of this world because if it was, then my servant would fight. And when he comes to set up that kingdom, guess what's going to happen? His servants are going to fight. We're going to read that because if he had come to do that, then it would have gotten done. That's right. But he said, my kingdom is not of this world. Because he came first time to do another thing. And that was to die for the sins of man. And when he returned, that's when he's going to return and set up his kingdom. And at that time, he will be the prince of peace. Go ahead, keep reading. 
that I should not be delivered to the Jews. Go ahead. But now is my kingdom, not from hence. Uh -huh. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Uh -huh. Jesus answered. Go ahead. Thou sayest that I am a king. Go ahead. To this end was I born. You say I'm a king. Jesus said to this end was I born. I came to bear witness of the truth, man. And the truth is that I was born to right. be a king. I was right. born right. to be king of the Jews. However, my kingdom is not of this world. But because if it was, then my servant would be fighting. Go ahead and read on. And for this cause came I into the world. Go ahead. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Uh -huh. Every, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now he said, for this cause was I born, and I came to bear witness unto the truth. So he was born to be king of the Jews. However, he didn't become king of the Jews at that time. But he will when he returns. Let's go now to... Uh, Let's go now to uh, uh, Micah chapter uh, uh, 5. And we began reading at uh, verse 1. Micah 5, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 1. Because, you know, this is when they asked the wise men. And, uh, uh, you know, where is he that is born uh, king of the Jews? So, uh, uh, and then they quoted him some scripture. And what they quoted was, it was quoted... Uh, from right here in this uh, fifth chapter of the book of, of Micah. So they gave scripture, people. They understood because it had been written in the scripture. Micah chapter 5 began reading at verse 1. 5 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. Go ahead. He have laid siege against us. Uh -huh. They shall smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. Now they're going to smite the judge of Israel with the rod up on the cheek. And they did that. When they crucified, this had to be fulfilled as well. You know, if you go and read about his crucifixion, you will find that they did just this. And when they did it, it was the fulfillment of this part of the scripture anyway. They're going to smite the judge of Israel up on the cheek with the rod. Go ahead and read. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, uh -huh. though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, Go ahead. yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, uh -huh. whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Well, this scripture that they quoted to him, you know, when uh, 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 Herod asked them, he said, you know, uh, thus it is written by the prophets, that thou, Bethlehem Judea, though thou be Small among the thousands of Judah. Right. Yet out of thee shall he come that is to be ruler in Israel. You know, Jesus came out of some little dusty town. Right. That's, That's where he was. He wasn't no big city boy. He was born in some little dusty town. Mm -hmm. That's where he was born at. Go ahead and read. Three. Read it. Therefore will he give them up uh -huh. until the time that she which Chavelleth have brought forth. Now, you know, it's talking about Israel here. Because, you, you know, it's hard to get around uh, 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 Jesus and, and, and the kingdom and all of that without bringing Israel into the picture. That's right. Because he would be born the king of Israel, king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he's going to give them up. And talking about giving up Israel mm -hmm. until the time he which travelers have brought forth. Go ahead and read. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Go ahead and read. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Now he's going to stand. This talking about G. He's going to stand and feed in the strength of the Lord and in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Keep reading. And they shall abide. Uh -huh. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Go ahead and read. And this man shall be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land. And this man, what man? Jesus, he will be the peace. That's right. He is the one that's going to be the peace. That's right. And you know, you got a, a, just a Bible full of it. Yes, sir. You know, he is the one that's going to bring peace. He said he will be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land. Go ahead and read on. And when he shall tread in our palaces, uh -huh. then, shall we raise against, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds uh -huh. and eight principal men. Skip down to uh, verse 15 now. Go ahead and read. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen. And now this is what he's going to do. And he's going to do this at the appointed time. He's going to do just this. Right. He said, then I will execute vengeance and anger 
and fury upon the nations. Go ahead and read. Such as they have not heard. Such as they have not heard. The Lord going to do a thing on these nations, people. That ain't going to be pretty at all. You know, the coming of the Lord ain't like you have been told. You know, he's going to come and grab a few people and take them off to heaven, and they're going to be up there in heaven, you know, uh, living well and all of that. It ain't going to be like that, not at all. You know, the Lord talking about executing vengeance and, 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 and wrath up on the heathen, which means the nations when he returns. That's how he coming. That's right. That's right. He's coming as the Lion of Judah. He ain't coming as the Lamb. He did the Lamb thing. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's over. Mm -hmm. Now it's the Lion of Judah. We're talking about an entirely different uh, nature here. Yeah. There's a huge difference between a Lion and a Lamb, people. Right. And he's coming as the Lion of Judah to execute vengeance right. up on the nations. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, Psalms chapter 110, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 1. You know you need to hear about this other side of him sometime. Mm -hmm. You know, they done made him be so passive until he ain't going to do nothing to nobody. Right. You can just do whatever, right. and everything is fine. You ain't got to worry about Man, You might have to worry about the Father, but you ain't got to worry about Jesus. Look here, that's the one you got to worry about. I want you to pay attention uh, to what's, uh, what we are about to read here. That's the one you have to worry about. Father just sitting there passing out orders. That's right. Jesus is the one that's going to carry him out. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, Psalms chapter uh, 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 110, and we'll begin reading at uh, verse 1, 110 and 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. The Lord said unto my Lord, uh -huh. sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. This is the one that would be called the Father saying to the one that would be called Jesus the Son, sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Uh -huh. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. And at the appointed time, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to rule in the midst of his enemies. Because he didn't come to do no ruling the first time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But when he returned, He's going to rule in the midst of his enemies. Read. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power uh -huh. in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Go ahead. Thou hast endured thy youth. Keep reading. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Uh -huh. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now that is what he is right now, sitting at the right hand of the Father, a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And he's going to sit there until the time when it is that the Lord is going to make his enemies his footstool. Right now he's sitting there and he is making intercession for the people as high priest after the order of Melchizedek. But notice what it says here about the one that was told to sit at the right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Read. The Lord at thy right hand shall uh -huh. strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Notice who's going to do the damage here. The one that was told to sit at the right hand. He is going to strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He's the one that's going to do the damage. That's the one you better be concerned with. That's right. That's right. The father just give him the orders and he carry him out. But now he said for the one that was told to sit at the right hand. Go strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Go ahead and read. He shall judge among the heathen. He's going to judge among the nations. Go ahead and read. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. This is Jesus that you're reading about. Mm -hmm. So he's not as passive as you have been told then, is he? No, sir. Because that's clearly who you're reading about right here. Just go in the, uh, the book of Hebrews and it'll tell you who it is, who the Lord is that was told to sit at the right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And that would be a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Go ahead, keep reading. He shall wound the heads over many countries. And he going to wound the heads over many countries. Go ahead and read. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Uh -huh. Therefore shall he lift up the heads. So now we understand who it is that's going to uh, carry out the wrath. Uh, uh, you know, we're dealing here with the, uh, with the Lord's wrath here. That's who we are dealing with. Let's go to... Uh, Revelation chapter 6, and we began reading at uh, verse 12. Revelation 6, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 12. 6 and 12. 
there was a book, you know, if you read back a little bit, you find out that uh, uh, there was a book that had been sealed with seven seals. And as each seal was taken off, then some happened. Something happened on this earth. Some event took place. Now we're going to just pick it up at the uh, sixth seal. Start reading at uh, verse uh, 12. Go ahead and read. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Mm -hmm. And lo, there was a great earthquake. Go ahead. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Uh -huh. And the moon became as blood. All this stuff going to happen, people. It's going to happen just like it's written. Right. You know, this ain't just some words that's written to, to fill up some pages in a book. Right. You know, he said, when he had opened the uh, sixth seal, I beheld. Uh, uh, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became as blood. And the uh, and the moon became like blood. Go ahead and read. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, uh -huh. even as a fig tree casts of her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. You know, this is some scary stuff here. If you if, if you believe what you read, this is some scary. You know, sun ain't going to give her light. Moon ain't give her light. Stars going to fall from heaven. All of this stuff, all of this is a sign of the Lord coming to pour out his wrath up on this earth. You know, we read about the, the wrath of the one that was told to sit at the right hand until I make thine enemies thy first two. All this is a sign. You know, before the Lord come and set up that kingdom, you're going to look at some of this first. Right. Right. And it ain't going to be pretty either. Right. In fact, it's going to be so scary until all the mighty men and the great men and all that going to run and and cry for the rocks to fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. These are mighty men. It said, they're going to be crying. You know, you gotta, that's got to be some scary stuff. You'd rather for the rocks to fall on you than to have to deal with this. Go ahead and read. 14. Go ahead. And the heaven departed as a scroll uh -huh. when it is rolled together. Go ahead. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So now this is exactly how you can't get around it. Ain't, ain't nothing going to change. Uh, you may as well hear it because it is what it is. And ain't none of it going to change. It's going to happen. It's going to unfold just like this. Don't nobody tell you about that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, everybody want to tell you, well, Lord just loves you. And he's going to come and he's going to take you to heaven with him. Why ain't nobody told you about the, of the, 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 the wrath of the lamb and the stars ain't going to give her light and the moon not going to give her light and, the, and, 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 and all of that. Go ahead and read on. And the kings of the earth and the great men uh -huh. and the rich men and the chief captains. And the Wait a minute. The kings of the earth and the great men and the. The mighty men and the chief captains. Go ahead and read. And every bondman uh -huh. and every free man Go ahead. hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Go ahead. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne uh -huh. and from the wrath of the Lamb. Hide up uh, upon the face of him that sitteth upon the throne, me and the Father, and from the wrath of of the Lamb. Go ahead and read on. For the great day of his wrath has come. Uh -huh. And who shall be able to stand? For the great day of his wrath has come. And who going to be it? Because it's coming. Yes, sir. And it's going to unfold in the exact manner that we are reading about here. Uh, because before you get to that kingdom of peace of there will be no end, you're going to have to get past this first. Because this is coming before the kingdom Come. Let's go now to uh, Matthew chapter 24. And we'll begin uh, reading at uh, verse 3, just so we can uh, put a timeline on this, what time it is uh, 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 that we are reading about here when the, uh, the stars ain't going to give her light and the moon ain't going to give her light and the sun uh, going to darken and all of that. Matthew 24. And began reading at uh, verse 3, 24 and 3. Go ahead and read. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. the disciples came unto him privately, saying, uh -huh. Tell us when shall these things be? Go ahead. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You know, he had been telling them about that temple that was there uh, in Jerusalem. It was the one that Ezra and Nehemiah had rebuilt because... Uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed the one that he had Solomon to build. 
So they had to come back and rebuild. And, 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 and Herod, he had improved up on it. You know, some, some people even call it Herod's temple. Well, it wasn't Herod's temple. It was the temple that Ezra and Nehemiah and all the people that went back after the Babylonian captivity right. had built. Right. Herod, he just came and he, I'll say, renovated it. You know, he beautified it. And so they was boasting about what a beautiful temple it was. And Jesus said, you see here, there will not be one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down. So whatever they got standing over there that they said was the temple wall wasn't the te it's not the temple wall, okay? Because Jesus said every one of them th uh, stones going to be thrown down, and every one of them was thrown down too. So now, but then, it, you know, what would be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? Let's go to, uh, let's, uh, we stand right where we are. But keep reading. Just keep reading. Verse go four. ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Uh -huh. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Go ahead. shall deceive many. Uh -huh. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Go ahead. See that ye be not troubled. Uh -huh. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So now, you know, it said there'll be wars and rumors of wars, and you looking at them, you know. All these ain't nothing but little scrimmages. Until the real war take right. place, the real war, that's the one that's going to announce of the coming of the Lord, but there are going to be wars. There have been wars down through the generations. But then there is the war that will end all wars. That's when the Lord is going to come and whoop everybody. And that's going to end all wars. You know, World War I didn't do it, World War II, and, and any other wars before they have, before the battle of Armageddon will not be the war to end all wars. But Armageddon, that's going to end all wars. Go ahead, keep reading. Seven. Read it. For nations shall rise against nations uh -huh. and kingdom against kingdom. Go ahead. And there should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Go ahead. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Now he said all these are only the beginning of sorrows. Here, skip down to uh, verse 15. Go ahead and read. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet uh -huh. standing in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. So now, you know, this is the... One that's going to appear to bring peace. He ain't going to bring peace. Because the book tells you about him. It said that by peace, he is going to destroy many. Because he's going to come claiming to bring peace. Mm -hmm. And some going to even sort of go with that. But he is the one that's coming that will appear to bring peace. But it said by peace, he is going to... Uh, Destroy many, cause ain't none gonna bring peace until the Lord Himself comes and bring peace. What verse are we? Sixteen. Skip down to verse twenty-one. Go ahead and read. For then shall be great tribulation, uh -huh. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. Go ahead. No, nor ever shall be. So, in other words, when this man come on the scene, the one that's gonna precede the coming of the Lord, when he does, when he sits. They're on a throne in Jerusalem and declare himself to be God. That will begin the great tribulation. And the Lord cannot come, people, until after the tribulation, as we are going to read here. Skip down to uh, verse 29. Go ahead and read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days mm -hmm. shall the sun be darkened. Go ahead. And the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Uh -huh. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Well, we read this earlier, then. You know, this announces the day of the Lord's wrath. You know, when the stars don't give light and the moon and the sun stop giving their light and all that, that is the one that will announce the day of the Lord's wrath here. And when will that take place? Just prior to the coming of the Lord. Read, brother. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Go ahead. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So now, you know, this is all about the Lord's wrath right. that's going to take place just prior to his coming. Because after that, then the Lord is going to come and he will establish that kingdom 
of peace. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 34. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 1. Isaiah 34, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1 because the Lord is going to uh, uh, establish uh, or sell a lot of issues here uh, when he returned. And one of the issues that he is going uh, 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 to uh, deal with is the issue of who the land of Israel belonged to. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right now you got squatters sitting there <laughs> right. that, that, right. that, 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 that ain't supposed to be there. That's right. But nevertheless, they said when, when, the, when the Lord moved Israel out, they moved in. And they laid claim to it. But the Lord said, I'm going to sell this controversy. When he sell the controversy with the nations, he's going to even sell that controversy uh, with Edom. Go ahead, start reading at 34. And begin at verse 1, 34 and 1. Read it, brother. Come near ye nations to hear, mm -hmm. and hearken ye people. Go ahead. Let the earth hear and all that is therein. Now he said, Lord, so I want the earth to hear this. And everybody... That is therein. I want you to hear it. Go ahead and read. The world and all things that come forth of it. Go ahead and read. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Now he said the indignation of the Lord is upon uh, this indignation of this Lord. here. This is Jesus that we are reading about. Because right. Father ain't going to do nothing. That's Father's right. going to just sit there right where he's sitting. Right. And he left everything in the hand of Jesus. Even the judgment. Even the Great white throne judgment. All of them have been left in the hand of Jesus. The indignation, it says here, is uh, 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 of, of the Lord is upon all nations. Go ahead and read. And his fury upon all their armies. And his fury, it says, is upon all of their armies. Go ahead and read. He have utterly destroyed them. Go ahead. He have delivered them to the slaughter. Uh -huh. Their slain also shall be cast out. Go ahead. And their stink shall come up out of their caucasus, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Read. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. Uh -huh. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Uh -huh. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a fallen fig from the fig tree. Now, you know, here you got the, the heavens being rolled like a scroll, and the, and, 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 the, and, and, the, and the sun and the moon and all of that. Go ahead and read. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Uh -huh. Behold, it shall come down upon Adumea. You know who Adumea is? That is Edom. So you know, Lord said, I got to mete out a sort of special punishment to him because he have done some things that right. really I didn't like at all. That's right. Go ahead, read. And upon the people of my curse to uh -huh. judgment. Go ahead. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. Uh -huh. It is made fat with fatness. Go ahead. And with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. Uh -huh. For the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra. Go ahead. A great slaughter in the land of Adumea. Now he got a sacrifice in Basra. All this is a... Uh, 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 the land of Edom here, and I do mayor, he calls it here. Go ahead and read. And the unicorn shall come down with them, uh -huh. and the bullocks with the bulls. Go ahead. And their land shall be soaked with blood, uh -huh. and their dust made fat with fatness. Go ahead and read. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. See what it say? It is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Yeah, the Lord coming to pour out vengeance. That's right. And he said, this day is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Go ahead and read on. In the year of recompenses. And the year of recompense. In other words, Lord, so I'm going to do some repaying here. Right. That's what recompense here. Right. I'm going to repay some people. Go ahead and read. For the controversy of Zion. Now, for the controversy of Zion. Why is there a controversy of Zion? Well, I'm going to read it to you. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter uh, 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 36. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 1. This Adumea and this uh, Basra. All this is Edom, you know, uh, the one that came in and took over Israel's land right. when Israel was moved out. Ezekiel chapter uh, 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 36, and we we'll began reading at uh, verse 1. Ezekiel 36, we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 1. This is the... Uh, uh, the, the the events leading up to the coming of the Lord, leading up to the time that he's going to come as the uh, prince of peace and establish this government of peace. 
We got to deal with this before that government of peace comes. I know it'd be good if you just could, you know, just one day and just wake up and, and, and uh, everything is just beautiful. But that's not how it's going to happen, so we may as well give it to you straight. Because <laughs> right. it ain't going to happen right. like that. That's right. You know, you know right. just one morning you wake up and, and everything just, right. just, just beautiful. It's, it's uh, 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 not going to happen like that. Uh, uh, this utopia is not coming like that, people. Mm -hmm. But th that's what everybody's looking for. You know, one day, Lord, going to come get me, y'all. <laughs> and I'm going to be up in heaven. Uh-uh. Start reading at 36. Lord, say, because I got a seller's controversy for Zion uh, with our do mayor. Go ahead and read. Also, thou son of man, mm -hmm. prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Now, the Lord is telling Ezekiel, you go prophesy to the mountain. You go tell the land and all that is therein, hear the word of the Lord. What do you want to say to him? Go ahead and read. Thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. because the enemy have said against you. Go ahead. Aha. Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, he's talking about the land. He said, the enemy. Say it against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. You know, another place he said, where is the Lord right. was there. That's right. Lord always there. Right. He ain't going nowhere. He's sitting right where he's supposed to be sitting. Right. And it's everything still belongs to him. But the enemy said, you know, Lord, Oh, the Lord was there. You know, he gone now. He ain't there no more. Now it will belong unto us. So they say even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Go ahead and read. Therefore prophesy and say, uh -huh. thus saith the Lord God. Go ahead. Because they have made you desolate and uh -huh. swallowed you up on every side. Go ahead. That you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. And you are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. Now they said they done made you desolate. And they done swallowed you up on every side that you may be a possession unto the nation. That's who the heathen is, the other nations. Go ahead and read. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, uh -huh. hear the word of the Lord God. Now he said, therefore, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Read. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, uh -huh. and to the hills, Go ahead. to the rivers, and to the valleys, uh -huh. to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Go ahead and read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, uh -huh. and against all I do mail. See what he says, surely in my jealousy, because right. Lord is a jealous God. So now he said, Surely in my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against I do mayor as well. Because right. he was the main one. Lord, I got this controversy. I got to mm -hmm. settle with you, I do mayor. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Which have appointed my land into their possession. See what he said? You have appointed my land into your possession. That's why you got the controversy. Lord, I got to sell. This, I, I got to sell it with the nations, and I have to sell it with I do may as well, because they have appointed my land into their possession. Go ahead and read. With the joy of all their heart. Go ahead. With the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Go ahead. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, uh -huh. and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord God. Go ahead. Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Go ahead and read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. Go ahead and read. But ye, O mountains of Israel, uh -huh. ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For they are at hand to come. The Lord is going to sell it. He's going to put it, the, uh, the rightful heirs of that land back in that land. That's right. Even all of them. But for now, then you know you got our do mayor and the rest of the heathen that's squatting on that land. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said, I'm going to come and I'm going to deal on the nations and I'm going to sell this controversy. Right. How are you going to sell it? He's going to put all of them out and he's going to put his rightful heirs in there. Go ahead and read. Verse 9. Read it. For behold, 
I am for you, and I will turn unto you, uh -huh. and you shall be tilled and sown. You know, you've been laying there desolate, but the Lord said to the land, I am for you, and, and you shall be tilled, and you shall be sown. Go ahead and read. And I will multiply men upon you. And I'm going to multiply men upon you, land. Go ahead and read. All the house of Israel, uh -huh. even all of it. All the house of Israel, even all. All of it. Go ahead and read. And the city shall be inhabited, uh -huh. and the wastes shall be builded. And the city will be inhabited, and the waste will be built. Because Lord is going to settle this country, baby. Right. When he come and deal on the nations, he also going to sell that controversy as well. For now, they're going to just sit there, and they're going to fight over the land. That's what they're going to do. Right. And the Lord had it written right here in this 36th chapter of Ezekiel. We're not going to bother reading it today. Let's go uh, to the book of Habakkuk. Uh, 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 we go going to chapter 3. And I'm going to show you how the Lord uh, gave this thing uh, to uh, Habakkuk. Because he even told him about this, uh, you know, I do may uh, booze ride, uh, which is all dealing with the people uh, of Edom that uh, came in and inhabited it of the land, because the Lord, when he come, people, he coming, and he going to sell a lot of issues. Start reading at, uh, at uh, Habakkuk, uh, chapter 3. Some pronounce it Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Habakkuk. You get the message. You know which one. Start reading at uh, verse 3. 3 and 3. Go ahead and read. God came from T-Man and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Now, you know this T-Man, that's just another name for Edom. Right. He came from T-Man. Well, what was he doing in T-Man? He was taking care of the business right. down there. Because right. he told you what he was going to have to do uh, 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 with, uh, well, uh, with Edom now. He says, so now God came uh, from Teman and the Holy One from Mount uh, Paran. Go ahead and read. Selah. Uh-huh. His glory covered the heavens. Go ahead. And the earth was full of his praise. Go ahead and read. And his brightness was as the light. Uh -huh. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was power, and there was and there was the hiding of his power. Go ahead and read. Before him went the pestilence, uh -huh. and burning coals went forth at his feet. Go ahead and read. He stood and measured the earth. Uh -huh. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. Now he beheld and he drove asunder the nations. Go, that's what he's going to do uh, when he returns. Go ahead and read on. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. Now he's saying even the everlasting mountains, they were scattered. Because when the Lord returned, people, he's going to shake up everything. Right. You know, you ain't going to have to wonder. What's I wonder what's happening. Right. You're going to know exactly what's right. happening. Because right. he's going to shake up right. everything. The book says he's going to shake up the heavens, and he's going to shake up the earth as well. You ain't going to have to right. wonder about nothing. Right. It will be very clear what is going on. Yeah. Go ahead and read. The, the perpetual hills did bow. Now he said even the perpetual hills, they did bow. Go ahead and read. His ways are everlasting. Now skip down to... Uh, Skip down to uh, 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 verse 11. Go ahead and read. The sun and moon stood still in the habitation. Uh -huh. At the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Go ahead. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Uh -huh. Thou didst thrust the heathen in anger. See what it say? You marched through the land in indignation. And you even uh, 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 say, thrust the heathen in in anger. Go ahead and read. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, uh -huh. even for salvation with thine anointed. Go ahead. Thou woundedest the head out of the house of the wicked uh -huh. by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Go ahead. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Mm -hmm. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. The rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Uh -huh. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses. Through the heap of great waters. Go ahead. When I heard, my belly trembled. Now, Habakkuk said, when I heard this, my belly trembled. Right. I got scared. I don't, Lord, don't let me be here when this happened. Right. I don't want to see this. Right. He said, now, uh, when I heard this, my belly trembled. Go ahead and read. My lips quivered at the voice. 
rottenness entered into my bones. He said, my lips quivered at the voice, and rottenness entered into my bones. Go ahead and read. And I trembled in myself. Go ahead. That I might rest in a day of trouble. And I trembled in myself that I might be at rest right. in this day of trouble. Right. Oh, he didn't want to deal with this. He didn't want to see this. Go ahead and read on. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. When he cometh up unto the people, he going to invade them with his troops. You know what invade mean? That means to take over by force because the Lord is coming to take over this earth even by force. Let's go over to uh, Revelation chapter 11. And we begin reading at uh, verse 15. Lord going to invade this earth, people. He coming and he taking it. That's what he going to do. He overthrowing all of the nations, all of them. And he going to set up his kingdom. This kingdom of peace that nobody wants to see him set up. Because everybody wants things to go on as is. Start reading at Revelations 11. And begin reading at uh, verse uh, 15. This is when the Lord is going to invade this earth with his troops. 15, uh, uh, chapter 11, verse 15. Go ahead and read. And the seventh angel sounded, uh -huh. and there were great voices in heaven saying. Now this is the last angel. When he sounds, mm -hmm. there were seven of them. Right. And when this last one sounded, that announced the coming of the Lord. That seventh angel sounded. Go ahead and read. There were great voices in heaven saying. Go ahead. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Uh -huh. And he shall reign forever and ever. At that time, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. And he's going to reign forever, even forever. Because he's setting up this kingdom and it's going to stand forever. Go ahead and read on. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God. Go ahead. Saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, uh -huh. which art and was and art to come. Go ahead. Because, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. Go ahead. And the nations were angry and thy wrath has come. And look at what it said about the nation. They were angry and thy wrath has come. Well, ain't nothing they can do about it. They can get angry all they want. Right. Because Lord right. is coming right. and as we have read, he's going to invade right. this earth with his right. troops and the nations are going to become the Lord's at that day. And the nations were angry that thy wrath has come. Because he's pouring out wrath when he comes. Right. Go ahead and read. Right. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged. Well, even at that time when the Lord comes, you're going to have the resurrection. This time of the dead, that they will be judged. And this is dealing with the judgment of the righteous at this time. He's going to have another judgment a thousand years later. And that's going to be the great white throne judgment. But now he said a time of the dead that they would be judged and he's going to start giving out rewards. Go ahead and read. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, uh -huh. and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, Go small ahead. and great, uh -huh. and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. See what he said he's going to do? He's going to give reward unto his servants, and to the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear his name, both small and great. And he should have destroyed them that destroy the earth. So he going Lord coming to give out rewards to those that have served him. But for those that didn't, he said he's going to destroy them. Let's go now uh, 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 to uh, Isaiah chapter 42. And we'll begin uh, uh, at verse 1. Isaiah 42, we'll pick it up at verse 1. Because when the Lord returns, he's returning as a man of war. He's going to bring peace, but he's coming as a man of war. Right. Lord, so I done held my peace for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to let loose. Start reading at Isaiah chapter 42 and begin reading at 1. 42 and pick it up at verse 1. 42 and 1. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. Behold, my servant. Mm -hmm. whom I uphold, Go ahead. mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. Uh -huh. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Go ahead. He shall not cry, uh -huh. nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Go ahead. A bruised reed shall he not break, uh -huh. and the smoking flax shall he not quench. Go ahead. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. 
He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth. Now he's going to bring forth judgment unto the truth and he ain't going to fail. Neither will he be discouraged right. until he has set judgment in this earth. You know, when the Lord came the first time, you know, this is mostly dealing right here is dealing mostly when he came the first time. Right. But we're going to get down to when he returns. Uh, continue to read. Read just a little bit more. Go ahead. And then we're going to skip. Read. And the owls shall wait for his law. And the owls is going to wait for his law because when he established this kingdom, people, a kingdom is ruled by law. And what law is going to rule God's kingdom? The laws that he gave to Israel. Mm -hmm. The ones that everybody said that you don't have to keep. This entire earth will be ruled and judged by those laws. Right. You, you, I, I can see why don't nobody want to sin. You mean now I can't keep eating pork and doing that all other stuff that I right. like to do? No. It said the owls are going to wait for his law. Because when he set up this kingdom, every government have laws. This one have laws. Whether they are just, I'll let you be the judge, but God's law is going to be just. Right. And this earth is going to be ruled by his laws. Go ahead and read. Five. Read. Thus saith God the Lord. Skip, skip down to... Uh, you know, it's dealing with, uh, you know, it's telling you about a uh, future and it's dealing with partially some of the things that he did when he came the first time. But skip down now to, uh, skip down to uh, uh, verse 13. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Mm -hmm. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Now, the Lord going to go forth like a mighty man, not as a humble lamb, but like a mighty man. And he's going to stir up jealousy like a man of war. Go ahead and read. He shall cry, uh -huh. yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. And he's going to cry and he's going to roar. And yes, he is going to prevail against his enemies. You know, we read about that in uh, some, you know, uh, uh, that he's going to rule over his enemies. Right. He's going to prevail Against his enemies. Everybody's telling you the same thing, but ain't nobody paying no attention. They don't want to hear this. Right. You know, they want to hear some smooth talk. You know, that's why I don't like that old church there. <laughs> they always got to read the Bible <laughs> and tell us about what the Lord is going to do. Why you can't just tell us that the Lord loves everybody and he's going to come and he's going to take us to heaven? Because if I told you that, then I'd be lying. Right. Because it's telling you right here what he's going to do. He's the one that's telling you what he's going to do. I mean, maybe you just don't want to hear it, but this is what he's going to do. He's telling you what he's going to do, and that's what he's going to do. Right. He's a man of truth. If he said that's what I'm going to do, then that's what I'm going to do. That's true. Go ahead. Keep reading. 14. Read it. I have long time holding my peace. See what the Lord said? I done held my peace for a long time. He's sitting there right now <laughs> holding his peace. Right. I'm just sitting right here right. And, and, and asking the Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right. So he said, now I'm long time holding my peace. And he's been holding it for a long time, but he's going he gonna to break loose. He's going to cry and he's going to prevail. Go ahead and read. I've been still uh -huh. and refrained myself. Go ahead. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. Now he said, I've been still and I've refrained myself. Now will I cry like a prevailing woman. Go ahead and read. I will destroy and devour at uh, once. Now I'm going to destroy and I'm going to devour, the Lord says, at once. Go ahead and read. I will make waste mountains and hills. Well, you know, uh, in, uh, in Habakkuk, you know, we read about the, you know, what he did to the hills and the mountains. Yeah. Called, he's shaking up everything here. So now he says, uh. Uh, I will make waste mountains and hills. Go ahead and read. And dry up all their herbs. Go ahead and read. And I will make the rivers islands. Uh huh. And I will dry up the and I will dry up the pools. Now let's go to uh, Isaiah, uh, 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 chapter twenty-six, and and we began reading at uh, verse fifteen, twenty-six, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse fifteen, twenty-six. And 15. This is, uh, you know, this is dealing with the Lord when he returned and he's going to, uh, uh, you know, tell you about how he's going to 
punished uh, the enemy. Start reading at verse 15, 26 and 15. Read. Thou has increased the nation, O Lord. Uh -huh. Thou has increased the nation. Go ahead. Thou art glorified. Uh -huh. Thou hadst removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. Now, you know, this one that's been removed far unto the ends of the earth, well, you know who that is. That is Israel. They have been removed far unto the ends of the earth. You know, you, 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 you sort of can't get around it because when the Lord uh, returned, one of the things that he's going to do, he's going to, you know, he talks about punishing and all of that, but one of the things he's going to do, he's going to gather Israel. Right. Uh, uh, and the book tells you not only uh, is he going to gather Israel, but he's going to gather others beside those that are gathered. But now right here he's talking about Israel. Read. Lord, uh -huh. in trouble have they visited thee. And then when they got in trouble, guess what, Lord? They visited you. Right. Now they're ready to pour out a prayer. Because, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the book calls this, this uh, 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 period of time here uh, that when, when the Lord is pouring out all of this wrath, he also called it a time of Jacob's trouble. And you, I don't have to tell you who Jacob is, do it. Jake going to be in trouble, y'all. Go ahead and read. And, and Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. Uh -huh. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. In trouble, Lord, they visited you, and they poured out a prayer when you was beating on them. That's what chastening is. They poured out a prayer uh, 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 when, while you was chastising them. Go ahead and read on. Like as a woman with child uh -huh. that draw off near the time of her delivery is in pain. Go ahead. And cries out in her pains. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. Go ahead. We have been with child. Uh -huh. We have been in pain. Go ahead. We have as it were, we have as it were brought forth wind. Uh -huh. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Go ahead. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Uh -huh. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my together with my dead body shall they arise. Go ahead. Awaken, sing, ye that dwell in dust. Uh -huh. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Now you are reading about the resurrection. Well, that's what we read about it in Revelation, didn't it? Right. You know, when the Lord come, He gonna punish the nations, and uh, at that time the uh, the dead gonna be raised. And uh, so you're reading about the same thing, regardless of where you happen to read it at. The book says. One thing and one thing only. Right. Go ahead and read. Come, my people. Uh -huh. Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Go ahead. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment uh -huh. until the indignation be overpassed. See, but the Lord said, you know, hide yourself as it was for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Because the Lord will do some indignation here. Mm -hmm. You know, so he said, hide yourself. Well, one good thing about it is that the Lord, he got a place that he's going to hide some until his indignation be overpassed. It is called the place of safety, the wilderness. So, you know, there's a place that the Lord is going to hide some so that they don't have to deal with this. Because you don't want to deal with it. You know, you heard what Habakkuk said. Yeah. I don't, my, when I heard it, I quibbled and I shook. And I said, Lord, hide me so I don't have to deal with this. Go ahead, read on. For behold, uh -huh. the Lord cometh out of his place. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place. Where is his place at? Heaven. His place is in heaven right now, sitting at the right hand of the Father. Right. But he's leaving there. Right. He said, the Lord cometh out of his place. Go ahead, read. To punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. To punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Go ahead, read. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Now let's go to Isaiah uh, chapter 13, and we'll begin reading at uh, verse uh, 1, Isaiah 13, and we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 1, because what we're about to read here is in time, and, uh, and once we read a little bit of it, you should easily be able to see uh, that this is in time. Isaiah chapter 13, and began reading, at uh, verse 1, Isaiah 13, and we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 
1, 13 and 1. Read it, brother. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. Now it said uh, uh, the burden of Babylon, and this Babylon that we are reading about here, it is the last Babylon. You know, the Bible talks about Babylon that Nebuchadnezzar ruled over and all of that. Then it talks in Revelation about Babylon the Great. That, and that Babylon is dealing with end time stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon, it has long been gone. But we are dealing with end time here. And you are getting one of the major players in this last great battle. The one that I said will be the battle to end all battles. Go ahead and read. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Go ahead. Exalt the voice unto them. Uh -huh. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Go ahead. I have commanded my sanctified ones. Uh -huh. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. Go ahead. Even them that rejoice in my highness. Now he said, I have uh, commanded my sanctified ones. You know, sanct and this ain't talking about holy and righteous sanctified either. You know, it just means they've been set aside to do a certain job. That's right. That's that's, that's what really sanctified mean to be right. set apart or set aside. Right. And these uh, mighty ones and these sanctified ones here, they have been set aside to do some bidding for the Lord in these last days. Go ahead and read. The noise of a multitude in the mountains. Go ahead. Like as of a great people. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations Go ahead. gathered together. Uh -huh. The Lord of hosts monster of the host of the battle. Now he said, a uh, 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 great uh, uh, people, a uh, 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 tumultuous noise, the Lord said. Even the kingdoms of nations gather together, and the Lord of hosts is the one that's calling them to the bow. Because right. the Lord going to call the nations to the bow. Come on that's down right. here, y'all. That's right. That's right. So I can whoop all y'all. Yeah. Together. I ain't gonna take you on. Uh, I ain't gonna take you on one by one. I'm gonna whip all y'all right. at the same time. Right. Lord is calling them down there. Right. So now, once he whoop everybody together, right. then everybody gonna know who run it. Cause right. Lord getting ready to run this thing, you all. That's right. right now, you know he's sitting quietly, but he gonna break loose one day. So now he he said. You know, the Lord is mustering the host to the battle. And he's even sent out the commandment for them to arm themselves. Because I want you to come up fully armed. Right. Right. Fully armed. Whatever you got in your arsenal, bring it. Because you're going to need it. And even then, it ain't going to do you no good. Come whooping all of y'all. Go ahead and read. Five. Read it. They come from a far country, uh -huh. from the end of heaven. Read. Even the Lord and the weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. Go ahead and read. How ye, for the dead of the Lord is at hand. Uh -huh. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Look at what he call it, the day of the Lord. Why he call it the day of the Lord? Because it is the day or the time in which he is going to pour out his wrath. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. That's the day of the Lord here. This right. is the day when he pouring out that wrath. Go ahead and read. Right. Therefore shall all hands be faint, uh -huh. and every man's heart shall melt. Go ahead. And they shall and they shall be afraid. Uh -huh. Pains and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flame. Uh huh. You know, it's saying that, you know, all their hearts going to melt and all of that. And they're going to be afraid. Go ahead and read. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Uh -huh. Cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. Go ahead. To lay the land desolate. Uh -huh. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. You know, the Lord is meeting out this wrath against not everybody, right. but against the, uh, the wicked, as he calls them here. Right. Go ahead and read. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Well, that dates it. The stars of heaven and the constellations thereof, not going to give their light. Well, when is it uh, the stars of heaven and the constellations not going to give their light? Just before the coming of the Lord. That's when they're not going to give their right. light. Remember, we read it in Matthew when they asked him what would be the sign of his coming. Right. And, 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 and then he went on to tell them uh, 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 about the signs leading yeah. up to his coming. Yeah. And then he said, when you see these things happen, then know that his coming is near even at the doors. Go ahead and read. 
The sun shall be darkened in his going forth. Go ahead. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Go ahead. And I will punish the world for their evil uh -huh. and, and the wicked for their iniquity. See what they say? I'm going to punish the world for their evil and the wicked, the Lord said, for their iniquity. Go ahead and read on. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease uh -huh. and will lay low the hauntedness of the terrible. Go ahead and read. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, uh -huh. even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Now he said, I'm going to make him more precious than fine. Why are you going to be so precious? Because the book talk about the Lord killing a third of men. Anytime a third of men is gone, then man is precious then. Mm -hmm. You know, precious means just a few. That's Ain't right. that many left. That's right. Go ahead and read. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, uh -huh. and the earth shall remove out of her place. Wait a minute, Lord. So I'm going to shake up everything, man. Yeah. I'm going to shake up the heavens, right. and even the earth. It's going to remove out of its place. Go ahead and read. And the wrath of the Lord of hosts uh -huh. and in the day of his fierce anger. Now he's saying the wrath of the Lord of hosts even in the day of his fierce And you know we read about Babylon. He is one of the major players. He is head. Because we getting ready to do some, world, some real world war. Right. You know, not a world war with, uh, you know, Your maybe countries. ten nations. On this side and 10 right. on that side. Right. Every nation right. is going to be involved in this war here. Every uh, uh, single nation. Now this Babylon that we read about here. Uh, uh, that is really the uh, Roman Empire. It's going to head up the west. And I'm going to show you who's going to head up the east. Skip down to verse 17. Go ahead and read. Behold. I will stir up the Medes against them. Well, you know who the Medes are? Yeah. The Medes, that is Russia. Mm -hmm. And they will be heading up the east. So everybody side it up. Either you with the east or with the west. Come and tell you right, however great the United States may be today, they will not be the ones that will be calling the shot in the final analysis. Out of the west, it would be the European common market, which is the resurrected Roman Empire, because Rome got to be around at the coming of the Lord. And the Medes, they will be heading up the east. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, uh, Revelations chapter 16. And we we'll began reading at uh, verse 12. Revelations chapter 16, and we're going to pick it up at... Uh, Verse 12, this, people, is the coming of the Lord that we're looking for. In the day when he's going to come and pour out his wrath, in the days just before he set up this uh, kingdom of peace, start reading at uh, Revelation 16 and began at verse 12. Go ahead and read. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Uh -huh. And the water thereof was dried up. The well, you know where the Euphrates River is? It is a river that runs straight down through the Middle East. It is said it divides the Eastern Black nations from the Western Black nations. So now the Lord said, uh, uh, when that sixth angel poured out, out, out the uh, 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 out his vow up on the great river Euphrates. Go ahead and read. And the water there was dried up uh -huh. that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And then the waters of it was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Well, who are the kings of the east? It is Russia and its allies. There is an alliance. You know, when the, when the uh, USSR fell, you know, they thought that was the end of Russia. Well, they just came up with another alliance that Russia is the head of. It's called the Shanghai something. I got it in my notes. But uh, because they are the army that the Lord has raised up to do certain things. So it's going to be around. Ain't no, ain't no getting around. It's going to be around. So now, and they are the ones that head up to the uh, kings of the east, the river Euphrates was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Go ahead and read. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs Go come ahead. out of the mouth of the dragon. Well, who is the dragon? That is the devil. Right. This, is, this is the west that you're looking at now. Right. 
you know, the east, the, the kings of the east, that's Russia and her ally. And he said, I saw three unclean spirits uh, uh, like frogs coming out uh, uh, of the mouth of the dragon. Go ahead. And who else? And out of the mouth of the beast. And out of the mouth of the beast. Go ahead and read. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. Who is the beast? That is the secular head of the West. That is the secular head of this resurrected Roman Empire. And who is the false prophet? That is the religious head. You, you, you know him. You know who he is. If, if you don't know, then talk to me after class. I'll tell you. So now he said, I saw these clean, these three unclean spirits come out of their mouth. And what were they doing? Go ahead, read. For they are the spirits of devils. Look at what he said they are. They are the spirits of devils. No matter how pious these people look. That is a demonic religion. That is what it is. Right. And true. when I said demonic, you don't know how I mean that. The Lord even said it when you read about it in uh, yeah. Revelation chapter 18. Yeah. It says, uh, uh, but they, I'm, I'm just reading you something from uh, 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 verse eight, 18 here. It said, uh, it is the whole of every foul spirit and of every unclean and hateful bird. Every foul spirit. I don't care how pious they look. It is demonic. Okay? Because all of that stuff that they gave you that's in that cup, if you will trace it back, you will find that it is demonic. So now you have these three unclean spirits like frogs. Came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of devils. Go ahead and read. Working miracles uh -huh. which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. To gather them to that battle of that great day of God Almighty. Go ahead and read. Behold, I come as a thief. Now, the Lord said, when, it, when, that, when you see that, then Lord letting you know it's time for me to come. Because before he can come, you got to see this. Right. Because the Lord said, at that time, when they all gather to do that battle, at that time I come as a thief. Go ahead and read. Blessed is he that watcheth and keep of his garments, uh -huh. lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Go ahead and read. And he gathered them together in a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Now he gathered them together in a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. That is a valley that is near Jerusalem, because the Lord is going to come and stand on the Mount of Olives, which is just east of Jerusalem. And a nation will be gathered in that valley that is called the Valley of Armageddon. That's where they're going right. to do the battle. Right. Let's go now to, uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 9. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 13. Revelation 9, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 13. So now, Lord said, uh, you know, the... Uh, River Euphrates was dried up uh, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Start reading at verse 13. Go ahead and read it, brother. And the sixth angel sounded, mm -hmm. and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. Go ahead. Saying to the sixth angel, which hath the trumpet, uh -huh. loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Go ahead. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month in a year for uh -huh. the slate, the third part of men. Go ahead. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000. You know, no one he said, you know, man going to be more precious than the golden wedge of Ophir. A third of men is going to be killed. It's going to be blood everywhere. Right. And in that valley, it said it will be up to the horse's brow for approximately 200 miles. That's a lot of blood, people. Mm -hmm. You think about driving 
uh, 200 miles. And then just blood. Mm. Go ahead and read. And I heard the number of them. Uh -huh. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. And them that sat on them, go ahead and read. having breastplates of fire and of jacinth uh -huh. and brimstone, go ahead. and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, uh -huh. and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Go ahead. By these three was the third part of men killed. By, you know, these are weapons of war that we are reading about here. Right. He said, by these three was a third part of men killed. Go ahead and read on. By the fire uh -huh. and by the smoke Go ahead. and by the brimstone which is issued out of their mouth. Which, Go ahead and read. Which issued out of their mouths. Read. For their power is in their mouth uh -huh. and in their tails. Go ahead. For their tails were likened to serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. So you know you're looking at war equipment. That's what you're looking at. Because it's, it's going to be just war, people. Right. Let's go now to, uh, let's, let's, let's go now uh, to uh, Joel. Chapter 2, and we began reading at verse 1. You're looking at this massive army that has been assembled by Russia of 200 million. Can you imagine an army of 200 million? I ain't talking about a, a nation of 200 million. I'm talking about just an army. Start reading at uh, Joel chapter 2, and we began reading at... Uh, Verse 1, you know, we're looking at this, and, and all this is leading up to that kingdom of peace. But you've got to deal with this uh, uh, before, you, uh, before we get to this kingdom of peace. This is, this is how it's going to unfold here. Joel, uh, 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 chapter 2, and began reading at uh, verse 1. Go ahead and read. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, uh -huh. and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Go ahead. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, uh -huh. for the day of the Lord cometh, for, it's, for it is not at hand. Now he said, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, because the day of the Lord coming, and it's now at hand, and who's going to be able to stand? Read. A day of darkness uh -huh. and of gloominess. You see what it is? The day of the Lord is a day of darkness and of gloominess. Now, so you know this ain't talking about some regular day of the week. You know, like people say, well, you know, we don't do the Sabbath. We do the day of the Lord. And, and, and they read that in Revelation, I believe, the first chapter. And, and, and that day of the Lord that was mentioned in Revelation, the first chapter, ain't got nothing to do with no Sunday. This is the, this is the day of the Lord that it is talking about. It's a, it is a day of darkness. It is a day of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. Go ahead and read. A great people and a strong, uh -huh. they have not been ever the like. They say a great people and a strong, and they have never been the like before, and neither will there be even unto the years of many generations. Ain't never been an army or something like that before. Right. right. 200 million men. Go ahead and read. Neither shall be any more after it, uh -huh. even to the years of many generations. Read it. A fire devoureth before them, uh -huh. and behind them a flame burneth. Go ahead. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Uh -huh. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. You know, but before them the land is as the Garden of Eden. Behind them as a... Any time you got some 200 million, maybe not all 200 million, but however many, it's going to be a lot of them. Right. But the army itself is going to be 200 million. Right. But any time you got them coming across the Euphrates River, before them is like the Garden of Eden, and behind them is like a desert wilderness. Mm. And ain't none going to escape. Read. Right. Uh, verse 4. Read it. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. Uh -huh. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Well, that's what John was describing in Ezekiel. Remember, we just read about that massive army right. uh, uh, in, in Revelation, I'm right. trying to say. But go ahead and read. Like the noise of chariots on uh -huh. the tops of mountains go shall ahead. they leap. Uh -huh. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble uh -huh. as a strong people set in battle array. And as a strong people set in battle array. Lord, and muster up this whole to the battle. Go ahead and read on. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. Uh -huh. All faces shall gather blackness. Keep reading. They shall run like mighty men. Uh -huh. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Go ahead. And they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Go ahead. Neither shall one thrust another. Uh -huh. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. 
And yeah. reading it said when they fall on the sword, they're they not going to be wounded. It's not going to say some guy going to fall on the sword and he ain't going to get wounded. But when you got an arm at that side, so what if I lose a few million? Right. You ain't hurt me at all. You understand what I'm saying? Right. You ain't hurt an army of 200 million if you lose a couple of three or four million. Right. So when they fall on the sword, ain't no damage really been done. I still got a, a, another 195 million left. Go ahead, read. They shall run to and fro in the city. Uh huh. They shall run upon the wall. Go ahead. They shall climb up upon the houses. Uh huh. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Go ahead. The earth shall quake before them. Uh huh. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shine. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, I think we done read that a few times, haven't we? So now, here it is. You uh, you understand now again. What time we are dealing with? It's written in the Old Testament, but it is a prophecy of the coming of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. And wait a minute, Lord going to do what before his what? His army. He going to utter voice. his voice before his army. Right. The sanctified ones that right. he was talking about. I set them aside to do this. That's what I set them aside. That's what they've been sanctified to do. You know, like... Uh, 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 the Lord called Nebuchadnezzar's army his servant. Nebuchadnezzar, he was a, he dealt in paganism. So he wasn't servant in the sense that, uh, oh, Lord, I love you. I'm, I'm going to be a great servant. I ain't going to lie still, do none of that stuff. He was his servant in the sense that he did what the Lord wanted him to do, what the Lord has set him aside to do. This is the Lord's army that you're looking at here. Go ahead and read. For his camp is very great. Go ahead. For he is strong, the executor of his word. Uh -huh. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Uh -huh. And who can abide it? The day of the Lord is great and it is very terrible. And who can abide it? Let's go to Joel chapter 3. And we began reading at uh, verse 1, Joel 3. And we are going to pick it up at uh, verse 1, 3 and 1. Go ahead and read. For behold. In those days and in that time, uh -huh. when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Now, the Lord is talking about bringing uh, Judah and Jerusalem back from captivity. But the Lord is going to let you know that it's synonymous with the Lord coming and doing this great battle here. Uh, go ahead and read. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, the Lord said, when I gather Judah and Jerusalem, I am also gather all nations and I'm going to bring them down into this valley of Jehoshaphat. You know what Jehoshaphat means? Where Jehovah will judge. That is what it means. Lord said, so I'm going to bring them down there. Come on down here, y'all. Go ahead. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, uh -huh. whom they have scattered among the nations Go ahead. and parted my land. He said, now, uh, at that time, I'm going to also plead with them for my people Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and they have parted my land. Read. And they have cast lots for my people. Uh huh. And have given a boy for an harlot. Go ahead. And sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Well, you know who that is. Yes, but now, Lord said, you know, I'm going to gather these nations. And I'm going to bring them down into this valley. And I'm going to plead with them for my people there. Skip down to verse 9. Go ahead and read. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Prepare war. Go ahead. Wake up the mighty men. Uh -huh. Let all the men of war draw near. Now he said, you go and uh, 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 declare this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. That's what they're doing. They're preparing war. They ain't thinking about feeding you. Right. People starving to death. You won't spend a million dollars to feed a few people, but you'll spend 500 million to buy some weapons. Right. Right. So what do you think they buying these weapons for? To prepare war, people. That's what you buy. Ain't that what you got them for? Yeah. So now he said, yeah. prepare war. Right. Wake up the mighty men. Go ahead and read. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords uh -huh. and your pruning hooks into spears. Don't worry about feeding nobody. If they style, so what? Take them, you know, what you was going to uh, 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 farm with to feed some people, don't worry about that. Make some weapons. Right. Do that. Right. Go ahead and read. Let the weak say I'm strong. Now, you know, if you want them little nations, even let them say that I am strong. Because, you know, 
You know, like you got a few weak nationalities shaking the fist. I ain't going to call no name. Right. But, but, you know, he said, even let the weak say that I am strong. Go ahead and read. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Go ahead. Did the cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord? See what the Lord says, summon yourselves and come, all ye heathen, gather yourselves together. Go ahead and read. Let the heathen be wakened uh -huh. and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Let the heathen be wakened. Let the nation be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Go ahead and read. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. The Lord says, there I sit to judge all of the nations round about. Go ahead and read. Put ye in the sickle, uh -huh. for the harvest is ripe. Go ahead. Come, get you down, for the press is full, uh -huh. the fats overflow. And this harvest and this vest that he's talking about, ain't talking about making no wine either. Right. It's talking about blood. That's what this right. is dealing with. Right. Ain't dealing with making no wine. Go ahead and read. For their wickedness is great. Go ahead. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Not a few. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Go ahead and read. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Go ahead and read. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, uh -huh. and the stars shall withdraw their shining. You know what time that is, don't you? Right. You, are, you know, don't you? That's Go right. ahead and read. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion uh -huh. and utter his voice from Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, uh -huh. but the Lord will be the hope of his people Go and ahead. the strength of the children of Israel. Go ahead. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, uh -huh. my holy mountain. Go ahead. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, uh -huh. and there shall be no and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Now, Lord said, when you see this, then you gonna know I'm the Lord your God dwelling in Zion. Cause when all this stuff happens, that is when the Lord gonna return, and He gonna dwell in Zion at that time. Let's go. Uh, let's go to. Uh, let's go to uh, 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 Zechariah chapter twelve. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 1, Zechariah chapter 12. And we're going to begin at uh, verse 1, 12 and 1. Because the Lord is coming, and, you know, and, and he's going to overthrow the nations. And then after that, he's going to set up this uh, kingdom of peace. And, and we're just showing you, leading up to his coming, uh, when he's going to overthrow the nations and set up this kingdom of peace that... Uh, that uh, I guess you won't. You should. Start reading at uh, Zechariah 12 and began at uh, verse 1. Go ahead and read. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord. Go ahead. Which stretcheth forth the heavens and lay of the foundation of the earth and form of the spirit of man within them. Go ahead. Behold. I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about uh -huh. when they shall be in a siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. So, you know, it said they're going to be in a siege. And it says both against Judah and against Jerusalem. You know what a siege is. You know, nations, they're going to come and they're going to have Jerusalem in a siege. They're going to surround it there. Go ahead and read. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone uh -huh. for all people. Go ahead. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, uh -huh. though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Skip to verse 9. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass in that day uh -huh. that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Now, Lord said in that day, you know, we read earlier about all nations coming up against the root. Lord said in that day, I'm going to seek to destroy all of the nations that come up against the room, you know, dealing, meeting with their armies. Right. Go ahead, continue read. And I will pour upon the house of David uh -huh. and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem Go ahead. the spirit of grace and of supplication. Uh -huh. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Well, who is this that they're going to look up on that they have pierced? Jesus. This is Jesus that you're looking at. That is the right. one that they pierced, and that is the one uh, that they are going to look upon. Go ahead and read on. And they shall mourn for him. Go ahead. As one mourning for his only son. Go ahead. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Well, who is the only son, Jesus? Jesus. Who is the firstborn? Jesus. Jesus. Right. Read. And that day uh -huh. shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem. Go ahead. As the mourning of Hadadrimon uh -huh. in the valley of Megadon. Well, you know, he is called the valley of Megadon, but in Revelation it is called the valley of of Armageddon. Go ahead and read. And the land shall mourn, every family apart. Now that is good. Let's go to uh, 
Zechariah chapter 14. We're getting there, you all. We ain't got a whole lot left. But let's go to Zechariah uh, uh, chapter 14 now. 14. Go ahead and read 14. Pick it up at uh, verse 1. Go ahead. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. You know, the Lord keep talking about the day of the Lord cometh, and now he's saying that the spoil will be divided in the midst of thee. Go ahead and read. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Lord, said, I'm going to gather all nations against Jerusalem. I told you all nations are going to be in there. This ain't going to be one of them little <laughs> world wars here. Right. You know, like I said earlier, 10 on this side and 12 on that. Uh -uh. All nations are going to be involved. That includes this one. Go ahead and read. And the city shall be taken. Uh -huh. And the house is rifled. Go ahead. And the woman ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. Go ahead. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. You know, that's why I ain't real anxious to get back over there. I want to get back over there at the time when I'm supposed to be back over there. Right. But before that time, now this is dealing with the, uh, uh, the, the end time. He said the houses will be rifled and the women ravished. And half uh, uh, and the residue of the people shall uh, 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 not be cut off from the city. And half of it shall... Go into captivity. Go ahead and read. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And then the Lord is going to go forth and he's going to fight against the nations as he fought in the day of battle. Go ahead and read. And his feet shall stand in that day uh -huh. upon the Mount of Olives. That is the mountain right outside of the room. His right. feet going to stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. The nations, they are in the valley. The Lord is standing on the Mount of Olives. And now the battle has ensued, and it's going to turn, and they're going to fight against the Lord. Go ahead and read. Which is before Jerusalem on the east. Uh -huh. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. Go ahead. And there shall be a very great valley. Uh -huh. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Go ahead. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. Uh -huh. For the valley of the mountains shall reach into Azal. Go Yay. ahead. Ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Go ahead. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. Skip down to verse 9 and continue reading. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Yes, he is. He's going to be king over all of the earth. That's after the fighting is done, though. Right. The Lord going to be king over all of the earth in that day. Go ahead, read. In that day shall there be one Lord uh -huh. and his name one. Now there's going to be one Lord and his name one. Keep reading. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Gibba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's wine presses. Go ahead. And men shall dwell in it, uh -huh. and there shall be no more utter destruction. Go ahead. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. See what it said, men going to dwell in it, and there will be no more utter destruction. But Jerusalem will be safely inhabited because it's certainly not safely inhabited now. That's right. But at that day, it will be safely inhabited because the Lord done whooped all of the nations and now we can have peace. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Zechariah chapter 1. And we began reading at uh, verse 16, Zechariah 1, and we'll pick it up at... Uh, Verse 16, because that's what we're waiting for. The time when not only will Jerusalem be safely inhabited, but this earth will be safely inhabited. But we see that does not come to pass until the Lord has finished whipping on the nations. Start reading at Zechariah 1 and began reading at verse 16. Then after that, then this can happen. 1 and 16. Go ahead and read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. Go ahead. My house shall be built in it. Now, the Lord said, I am returned unto Jerusalem with mercies. And the Lord said, my house will be built in it. Go ahead and read. Saith the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. And a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. Cry yet, saying, uh -huh. thus saith the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion. Go ahead. And shall yet choose Jerusalem. Lord said, you know, uh, 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 thus I return unto Jerusalem uh, with mercies, and my house shall be built in it. Let's go to uh, Zechariah chapter 6. 
We're going to pick it up at verse 12. I'm going to show you who it is that's going to build this house. That's right. Because, you know, we're looking at uh, Jerusalem now. And, and they're talking about building some house in there now. But it ain't the house that the Lord is going to dwell in. Now, when the Lord returned, I returned unto Jerusalem with mercies, the Lord said, and my house will be built in it. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 6. And we began reading at verse 12. Go ahead and read. And speak unto him, saying, uh -huh. Thus speak of the Lord of hosts, saying, Go ahead. Behold the man whose name is the branch, uh -huh. and he shall grow up out of his place. Now the man whose name is the branch, I don't have to tell you who the branch is, do I? Right. The branch, that is Jesus. The man whose name is the branch, he's going to grow up out of his place. What are you going to do? Go ahead and read. And he shall build the temple of the Lord. And he's going to build the temple of the Lord. The temple that the Lord is going to set in, the man whose name is the branch, he's going to be right there when that temple is built. You know, they're talking about building a temple now. And the one that doesn't know any better, they are talking about building a temple for the Messiah. Right. They don't understand that Jesus is the Messiah he just had not come yet to sit in a temple yet. So they're building a temple that they're talking about all the time. They're building it for the Messiah. But the one that Jesus the Messiah is going to dwell in, he is going to be there when it is built. Go ahead and read. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord. See what it says? Even he is going to build the temple of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. Now he's going to bear the glory, and he's going to sit and rule up on his throne. What throne is that? The throne of David, where he is going to sit on, like the angel said to Mary uh, uh, just before she gave birth to Jesus. Go ahead and read. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. And he's going to be priest up on the throne as well. Go ahead and read. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Uh -huh. And the crown shall be to Helam and to Tobijah and to Jediah and to Hen, the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. Well, you know, there's some people that's going to dwell with him, that's going to be a part of his kingdom. But the man whose name is the branch, he is the one that's going to build the temple. I return unto Jerusalem, and I will dwell in the midst of it, and my house will be built in it. If you read Ezekiel, like starting around 40 on down to the end, it told you a lot about that temple that the man whose name is the branch is going to dwell in. We ain't going to bother uh, 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 dealing with it today. Let's go to Haggai. Chapter 2, and we began reading at verse 6. Just back up. So all you got to do is just back up. One book. Haggai chapter 2, and we began reading at uh, verse 6. Haggai 2 and 6. Go ahead and read. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Now the Lord say yet once in a little. You know what it is he's going to do all this shaking, don't you? He said, I'm going to shake the earth and the sea and the dry land. Go ahead and read. And I will shake all nations. Uh -huh. And the desire of all nations shall come. Go ahead. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. And I'm going to shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord. Ezekiel told you about, you know, Lord going in one gate, and once he goes in that gate, ain't nobody else going to be shed, and ain't nobody else going to be allowed to come in that gate. Go ahead. You know, this, this is the time that he's talking about here. Go ahead and read. The silver is mine. Go ahead. And the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Read. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, the glory of this latter house, you know, this last house here, right. that the Lord is going to be, will right. be greater than the former. Right. Because you had the former first, the one that the Lord had Solomon to build. Right. Then in between, you had another one that he had Ezra and Nehemiah to build. But he said the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, this latter house will be greater than the former house. Go ahead and read. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. See what the Lord said, and in this place 
I will give peace. Because that second temple they built, they didn't have no peace. Right. In fact, they were standing there with a sword in one hand and a brick in the other. That's right. But this latter house, this last house that he's going to build, where the Lord is going to dwell, he said, in this place, I'm going to give peace. But this is after his coming. That's after all the fighting is done. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to Isaiah chapter 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. We got two more scriptures after this, and that will be it. Uh, Isaiah chapter 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. Isaiah 2, and we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 1. 2 and 1. This will come to pass in the last days here. Start reading at uh, 2 and 1. And Micah, the Lord had Micah, to write the exact same thing that you are about to read here in this Isaiah chapter 2. But go ahead and read, brother. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now, you know, the Lord said, I'm returning unto rule. I'm going to dwell in it, and my house going to be built in it. Right. Now, he said, uh, the word that Isaiah saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. You know, in other words, where the Lord is going to dwell and where his house going to be. Go ahead and read. And it, came, and it shall come to pass in the last days. And notice what time this is going to come to pass. In the last days. You know the days we are living in. Right. The days just ahead of us. Go ahead and read. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. Go ahead. And shall be exalted above the hills. Read. And all nations shall flow unto it. You know it's dealing with the government of God. That's going to overthrow all of the other little governments. And all nations, he says, going to flow unto it. Because the Lord told you in Revelation that he's going to overthrow all of the nations. And that is when he invade this earth with his troops. Go ahead and read. And many people shall go and say, uh -huh. Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Go ahead. To the house of the God of Jacob. Go ahead. And he will teach us of his ways. And, and you know, we got to go up there. Right. And he's going to teach us of his ways as it was written in Zechariah uh, uh, chapter 14. Go ahead and read. And we will walk in his path. And we're going to walk. I tell you that. That's how it's going to be. He's going to teach us of his ways, and we are going to walk in his path. Oh, you gonna, the whole earth going to have to walk in them paths. Right. Right. In them laws, in other words. Go ahead and read. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Go ahead. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. See what it says? Out of Zion. Going to go forth the law and the word of the Lord from the root. Go ahead and read. And he shall judge among the nations uh -huh. and shall rebuke many people. Go ahead. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares uh -huh. and their spears into pruning hooks. Go ahead. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Uh -huh. Neither shall they learn war anymore. You know, that sounds like peace to me. That's right. Nations not going to lift up sword against nation anymore. And neither will they learn war anymore. That's a good thing. I don't yes, know. If, if you don't see that as being a good thing, something is wrong with you. Right. Because you're going to have a child, a grandchild, a, a, a nephew, or a, 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 a son that might end up with war. But you don't have to worry about that right. when the Lord returns. Mm -hmm. Because he said a nation's not going to learn war against nations anymore. That's peace, people. Let's go to uh, Zechariah chapter 9. And we began reading at uh, verse 9. 9 and 9. 9 and 9. Okay, brother, when you get it, uh, I want you to go ahead and uh, read. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Uh -huh. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Uh -huh. He is just in having salvation. Go ahead. Lowly in riding upon an ass and upon a coat the foal of an ass. Well, you know, that's, what he, that's how he came the first time. Right. You know, when he came as a lamb, he's just in having salvation and riding up on an ass, the coat, even the fold of an ass. But now you are looking at his second coming when he coming to do war with the nations and establish a kingdom of peace. Zechariah 9, verse 10. Go ahead and read. 
And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim. Go ahead. And the horse from Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And the Lord said, the battle bow is going to be cut off. Right. Nations will not learn war against nation anymore. Right. The battle bow, he said, will be cut off. Go ahead and read. And he shall speak peace unto the heathen. And he's going to speak peace unto the heathen. That's after he finished whooping him. Right. 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 Whip him into submission. Mm -hmm. Now there can be peace. He going to speak peace, it says, unto the nations. Go ahead and read. And his dominion shall be from sea even to sea. He going to overthrow all of Can you imagine the entire earth at peace? That's, that's almost unimaginable. You understand what I'm telling you? Because everywhere you look, they fighting. That's right. Always have been fighting. But now you got an entire earth that is at peace. There will be peace from one end of the earth even unto the other. Only in the Prince of Peace can do that. Can't nobody right. else do that. Right. That's right. That's right. You can't hardly get two nations together to be at peace for a few months. Right. I look at the Middle East. You look, ever since Edom moved in there, he been fighting with Ishmael or with somebody. Right. Right. They have peace for a couple of months, then they right back at war again. Same thing gonna happen with Korea. They ain't even declared peace yet. <laughs> they just shook some hands. Right. Well, you know, we, we need to talk about it maybe. Right. So we'll step across the border and shake hands as uh some kind of sign of peace. Ain't going to be no peace until the Lord come. Who else can bring peace from one end of the earth even unto the... You know, you got this man that, that's going to claim to bring peace. And some even believe that he is going to bring peace. I've even heard some political leaders say that he is the only one that can bring peace. But God said by peace... He is going to destroy many. Right. Only the Prince of Peace can do it, people. And that's only after war. That's only after he done whooped everybody. I said let there be peace. There better be peace. You know who I am, right? I am the one that whooped all of y'all. Now, y'all yeah, yeah, going to live at peace. Right. Go ahead and read. Uh, end of 10. Uh -huh. And from the river even to the end, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Uh, now he said, and from the river even unto the ends of the earth. One other place, Psalm 72, verse 1. 72, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 1. 72 and 1. And this is land. 72 and 1. Go ahead and read. Give the king thy judgments, mm -hmm. O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Go ahead and read. He shall judge thy people with righteousness uh -huh. and thy poor with judgment. Now, that's how the Lord is going to judge. He's going to judge uh, 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 with righteousness. Go ahead and read. The mountains shall bring peace to the people uh -huh. and the little hills by righteousness. Go ahead. He shall judge the poor of the people and shall save the children of the needy uh -huh. and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Go ahead. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure uh -huh. throughout all generations. Now he said they're going to fear thee as long as the sun and the moon endure uh, 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 throughout all generations. And he said he's going to break in pieces of the oppressor. Go ahead and read on. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass. Go ahead. As showers that water the earth. Go ahead and read. In his days shall the righteous flourish. Uh-huh. An abundance of peace so long as the earth, so long as the moon endure. And his days shall the righteous flourish and the abundance of peace as long as the moon endureth. Go ahead and read on. He shall have dominion also from uh -huh. sea to sea uh -huh. and from the river unto the ends of the earth. He's going to have dominion from sea to sea and from the river even unto the ends of the earth. And there will be peace, people, mm -hmm. from the river, even unto the ends of the earth. Thank you, and I hope you Wonderful uh, learned something uh, from this lesson. Our Father, Our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. 
Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debt. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. From evil. From evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excellent lesson, Danny.